Here he comes, here he comes. Then the trumpets, then the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. Deep in the heart of the great southwest lies the fertile valley of Twin Rivers. Here this year grazed what promised to be the fattest, heaviest cattle the valley had ever known. For after two years of drought that had brought death and starvation to thousands of cattle and had brought the cattlemen to the verge of ruination, the Twin Rivers were again running full and the grass on the government-owned range was again growing green and tall. Now at last the cattlemen could breathe easier. Two months of feeding and their cattle would be ready for market. Their heavy mortgages would be paid off. Prosperity was just around the corner. Chief investigator for the Cattlemen's Association, it was my job to see that nothing happened to these cattle before they were shipped. And a message I'd received last night had me worried. When we rode into the little cattle town of Twin Rivers that morning in answer to an urgent message from the Cattlemen's Association, I knew that trouble with a capital T wasn't far off. And my saddle pal, Red Connors, must have sensed that trouble too. For he's never very happy when things are peaceful. you know why I sent for you? Well, I can guess. I've already heard that Bob Norman got back into town last night and he's figuring on running sheep here. Right. What do you intend doing about it? Like I was telling Hoppy coming into town, if we can round up enough cattlemen, there won't be a sheep get within a hundred miles of this town. That goes for the sheep herders, too. But Red, there's no use taking a chance on killing off a lot of men just to keep a few sheep out of here. I don't care how it's done, but I give you my word, if one head of sheep comes into this district, it means a fight to the finish. All right, Sam, we'll see what we can do about it. Come on, Red. This was the cattleman's declaration of war. I'd seen range war between cattlemen and sheepmen before, and I knew what it meant. The range would be burned over. They'd be ruined for years. Ranch houses and buildings would be blown up. Stock would be driven off and destroyed. Men, yes, even women and children would be killed in a senseless, ruinous struggle. And Bob Norman was crying for that kind of a war when he'd said that he intended stocking sheep on the rundown ranch he'd left a year ago.
I don't know who started it, but all of a sudden, there it was. This is what I've been waiting for. I've just been itching to get my hands on one of them sheep, men. I'm going to get them. Red, come back here. You've overgrown both peeps since you can get away with this. You've got another thing coming. Anybody else want to fight? I knew it. All right, break it up, all of you. Don't try to tell me what to do. I'm telling all of you what not to do. Well, you ain't telling me. Think maybe we'd better try to settle this without gunplay? Do as Hoppy tells you, Biggs. Who is this Hoppy? Up along Cassidy, investigator for the Cattlemen's Association. Hi, Hoppy. Hi, Bob. This is my partner and new brother-in-law, Rance Barlow. How are you, Rance? This is Red Connors. Hey. This is Lucy, my wife. Your wife? We were married last week. How do you do? Mr. Cassidy, I want it understood. My man didn't start this trouble. Well, what did you sheepmen expect? Key to the city in a red carpet? But if trouble has to come, the men who are bringing our sheep in here are just as tough as the cattlemen, maybe tougher. I take it you're figuring on putting up a fight. If we have to, and it'll be a fight to the finish. But I want to avoid bloodshed if I can. That's why I asked for a meeting with the cattlemen this morning. Let's go over and have a talk with Mr. Berger. There you have it, Mr. Berger. My sister and I were running out of grazing land. So when Lucy married Bob, we decided to pool our interest and bring our sheep down here to his ranch. We've got to move them or they'll starve. Bob, you were raised in a cattle country. You know why we can't allow you to come into this district. We've had a drought here for two years, and now that the grass is beginning to grow green, why, sheep would ruin this range for another two years. We have to think about ourselves, too, Mr. Berger. My brother and I have $5,000, every cent we have tied up in our sheep. There was something going on that I couldn't figure out. Bob was not the same boy I'd known before he'd left for Montana. All through the meeting, he had avoided my eyes. I'd let Barlow and Lucy come up with all the answers. As far as I was concerned, these people didn't talk or dress or act like sheep people. It was about time for me to ask some questions. Bob, where are your sheep now? Why, uh, they're over in New Mexico. My herders are ready to start to drive them in, and I give the word. What are they, marinas or durocs? Why, they're um, half and half. Uh, half merinos and half durocs. <coughs> Catching cold? Hmm? Lucy had stepped right into my little trap. If these people had known anything at all about stock, she would have known that Durocs are not sheep, but a breed of pigs. I hate to see a range war break out here in Twin Rivers, but I just don't see how it can be avoided. Uh, unless you have some other idea, I'm sure Mr. Berger would listen to any reasonable proposition. If it'll avoid trouble, I'm willing to be reasonable. If the cattlemen will pay us the cost of our sheep, that's all I want. Why, do you think for one minute that I... Just a minute, Sam. Let me handle this, please. We're going to keep out of this fight even if we have to buy our way out of it. Now, you say you have $5,000 invested in your sheep. It'll take probably a week to raise that much money. But if I give you my word that you'll be taken care of within that time, will you agree to keep the sheep out of here? What do you say, sis? If Hoppy gives you his word to do something, you can take it. All right. We'll give you a week to raise the money. Thank you very much. Let's go. Did you want to say something to me? No. Hoppy, have you gone completely loco? Since when did the cattlemen of Twin Rivers start buying off a bunch of wormy sheep men? This is almost blackmail. It is blackmail, at least a try at it. Barlow's bluffing. He hadn't any sheep. What makes you think that? Didn't you hear what that woman said when I asked what kind of sheep they were? No, I guess I was too busy being mad to hear anything. Tell them, Red. They're half and half. Half Merino and half Duroc. <laughs> <laughs> Duroc? Did she say Duroc? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny to me, too, except that I couldn't get over the look in Bob Norman's eyes. 
the look of a trapped animal that knows it doesn't have a chance. And it wasn't funny to think what Bob's return to Twin Rivers, a married man tied up with sheep men, was doing to Mary Warner, our little postmistress. Poppy. Yeah? I'm going to tip off the cattleman, and tonight we're going to ride that whole four-flushing kitten caboodle out of this county on a rail. Sam, you're not going to do anything until I give Bob a chance to get out of this mess he's in. And don't let the cattleman go out looking for trouble. Those two men of Barlow's look like they can take pretty good care of themselves. And you and I are going to see if we can find out what's happened to Bob. See you later. You sure straighten him out. Hi, Mary. Hello, Hoppy. Will you do me a great favor? Oh, well, sure I will. Will you give this to Bob for me? Well, if you want me to. I knew the story back of this little ring. There had been an understanding between Mary and Bob that as soon as he'd made enough money to restock his ranch, he'd come back and claim her. Give it to him and, and tell him I wish him all the happiness and good luck in the world. That's another count against that bunch of no-good fakers. You know, I'm just itching to get down to that there ranch and get my hand on some of them sheep herders. He didn't do so well the last time. Oh, shucks. I just let him get in the first punch so he'd think he was going to have a pushover. Didn't he? Of course not. If you hadn't have stopped me, I'd have had him whipped in no time. If I hadn't have stopped you, you'd have been on your back again in no time. Oh, Hoppy, I... Come on. Before I could do anything to help Bob Norman, I'd have to find out what kind of a hold Barlow held over him. So I'd worked out a plan to get Bob by himself where I could have a talk with him. Bob, there's a little matter of an unpaid feed bill that he owes the Cattlemen's Association. It's funny you didn't run into him on your way out from town. Uh, we, uh, we took the shortcut. He's on his way in there to see you. What about? He's afraid. So am I, for that matter. When we got back here today, we found a note on the porch telling us to get out without waiting for any payment. It was signed, Sheep Haters. Let me see that note. I don't have it. Bob must have taken it with him. Well, he's liable to be riding into trouble. There's some trigger-happy cattlemen in this part of the valley. Come on, let's see if we can stop him. miles out of town, we had nearly caught up with Bob when... shot Bob were too far away for me to make out who they were. But if they were some of the cattlemen who had decided to put an end to Bob's career as a sheepman before he got started, they'd answer to me. But I couldn't go after them now. Bob was badly hurt and needed a doctor. I hope. 
hope you don't mind my bringing Bob here, but I couldn't think of anybody that would make a better nurse for him than you. I'm glad you did, Hoppy. Uh, that'll be all, Mary. Uh, Hoppy, it's a lucky thing that you and Red got him here as soon as you did. A little rest and he'll be as good as new. That's uh, fine. There you are, Doc. I'll give you a hand. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. It's all right. I'll be seeing you. Say hello to your wife. I will, thanks. Hey, Hoppy, Bob's having deliriums or something. He's babbling all over the place. Well, he's probably got a slight concussion when he fell off that horse. He'll, whatever he's got, he's trying to say something about Barlow. No, no, hmm? I, I can't go through with it, Barlow. They're my kind of people. I can't let you double cross. Wait a minute. Get your hands off of me, Barlow. Take it, take it easy, Bob. Hoppy, what happened to me? What am I doing here? Well, Red and I brought you in. You were coming in from your ranch today and somebody shot you. But you'll be all right now. I'll never be all right again, Hoppy. Bob, do you feel like telling me what this mess is you got into? Maybe I can help you. That's not a very pretty story, Hoppy, but... I was coming in to tell you about it anyway, so here goes. I was over in New Mexico when I met Lucy and her brother in a gambling hall where they were working. I guess my foolish bragging about my ranch being worth a lot of money caused it, but... Anyway, they got me drunk one night. The next morning, they told me I was married to Lucy. I tried to get Lucy to call it off, but it was no dice. When I told them that I wasn't rich, that my ranch was worthless, Barlow dreamed up the scheme to swindle the cattlemen by threatening to run sheep in. Lucy promised me my freedom if I'd go along with the idea, but... When I saw you this morning, and Mary, I knew I couldn't go through with it, even if it meant being stuck with Lucy for the rest of my life. Bob, uh, did you tell Barlow that you were walking out on him before you left the ranch today? I told him I was going to tell you the truth no matter what happened. What was his reaction to that? He said if I was going to be a fool, there was nothing much he could do about it except call the whole deal off. Now, ain't that just like a bunch of dumb sheep herders spoiling all their fun by giving up so easy? I don't think they gave up. They thought they were playing it the smart way. But I don't get it, the... Uh... Wait a minute. Now I was beginning to get a clear idea who shot Bob and why. I was sure that Barlow had sent his gunmen after the boy to quiet him for good before he could talk and spoil their deal. Some unknown trigger-happy cattleman would be blamed for the killing, leaving the Barlow outfit to collect and pull out with no one the wiser. Fred, I've got an idea that might work. What is it? You and I are going out and have a talk with Barlow and his men. We'll be back as soon as we can. All right. start anything unless they do. I sure hope they do. Hi. Something you want, Cassidy? Yeah, I want to talk to Barlow. I got some news for him. Hi, Rance. Hi, Cassidy. What is it? Having trouble raising the money? No, not at all. The association will have the money for you by noon tomorrow. I just thought I'd better tell you to keep your eyes open until you're paid off. Looks like we might have a little trouble with the cattleman. Is that so? Yeah. Bob Norman was shot this afternoon. Shot? Yeah. Was my partner killed? Oh, no. He'll be all right in a few days. The uh, postmistress is taking care of him over at her place. Did you talk with him? Did he say anything? I mean, about who did it? Not a word. The doc gave him quite a dose of sleeping powders. I'm sure you won't do any talking before morning. 
Well, in that case, I guess it wouldn't do us any good to ride in and see him before morning. No, you couldn't do anything for him that hasn't already been done. Well, thanks for everything, Cassidy. I'll see you in town tomorrow. Yeah. In the meantime, we'll take your advice and keep a sharp lookout. Those same cattlemen may decide to shoot us down the way they did Bob. That's right. Well, so long till tomorrow. Come on, Red. Let's see if we can find out who those cattlemen are that shot Bob. I had the feeling that sometime during the coming night, Barlow and his men would try to get rid of the one witness against them before he did any talking. I had baited my trap, and now I was going to set it. The next move would be up to Barlow. Keep your mouth shut, sister, and you won't get hurt. Shh, quiet. You'll awaken my patient. We didn't come here to awaken him. We just came here to stop any blasted sheep herder from bringing sheep to the Twin Rivers. Stop it! What are you doing here? I had an idea something like this was going to happen when I saw you three slip away from the ranch tonight. Shut up! I'll speak my piece and you'll listen. I didn't mind going through that fake marriage, but I'm not going to let you put a noose around my neck for tying me in with murder. Shut up! Go ahead, Beggs. Finish what we came here for. No, wait! Get your hands up. All right, Red, take the gun. Get over there. Well, I've seen enough and heard enough to convict all of you. All right, you can come out now, Bob. What's going on? Maybe you better show them, Red. You dumb sheep herders just been wasting good lead on a dressmaker's dummy. <laughs> Mary, I think Bob has been punished enough. Now that we know he's a free man, maybe you better take your ring back. Thanks, Hoppy. That goes for both of us. I can't figure out how I was ever chump enough to let you outsmart me, Cassidy. You'll have plenty of time to figure it out later in some nice, quiet prison. All right, let's go. It's a short walk. The jail is just across the street. Goodbye until then.